Many experts believe that it is a good I, that there is a good deal of energy lost in the transformation of hydrogen, and that is it is it is a transitional energy. Is this a good idea to invest so much in in an energy that could be so short lived? Uh, and you want me to respond in English or in French? French, as it's from Radio Canada. Okay, maybe I'll start in English and then I'll go into French. Um, so. First of all, I think people have to understand that there are different pathways to get to hydrogen, um, and each of the pathways has different positives and, and, and different challenges. One, which is the focus of the work here, is on using renewables, uh, wind, in order to generate hydrogen through uh, electrolysis. Um, and and uh, another, which is something that uh, provinces like Alberta are more focused on, is to actually produce hydrogen from natural gas, either by capturing the carbon and sequestering it, or by using a particular kind of, of process that allows the carbon to drop out as a solid. Um, in the context of, of the decarbonization, particularly of industrial applications, um, there are very few choices than hydrogen um, to displace natural gas. Um, there are some industrial processes where one can look to electricity, but by and large, you have very little choice. Um, so the challenge for us is to make hydrogen as cost effective as possible. Yes, there are losses in the conversion process, um, but it is to make hydrogen as cost effective as possible to, uh, to ensure that we actually can displace natural gas, which is required if we are to fight climate change. Um, but I would also say that in the case of offshore wind in particular, we have an enormous resource from which we are deriving zero value right now. Um, at the end of the day, there is more than enough onshore and offshore wind to decarbonize the Nova Scotia grid and to be able to actually convert and, and produce hydrogen for export and for domestic use. The alternative is simply to let the wind blow and not extract value from it. I'm not sure why that would make any sense at all. So the losses issue, I think, is a bit beside the point. Just looking for hands from the room, or not the room, wherever <laughs> this outdoor lovely space. Right. Yes. Hi. My name's Luke Diamond. I'm with the Cape Breton Post. Um, obviously, the money here today is to uh, reinforce that partnership between Canada and Germany. It's a lot of money. And I'm curious, there's some uh, local interest in the sale and consumption of green hydrogen. Um, does that, does the money here today open up more avenues for uh, some possible local usage of this region? So uh, I think it is important that we are thinking about domestic use of hydrogen and it's not just an export opportunity and there are um, significant opportunities for the utilization of hydrogen domestically here in Nova Scotia but certainly we're already seeing it in places like Alberta where they actually are producing hydrogen for the purpose of, of displacing natural gas in the oil and gas sector. Um, and, uh, and so I do think there are opportunities. Uh, those opportunities would actually allow businesses uh, like the ones that I mentioned in my speech to be able to scale their business, um, which obviously helps to reduce costs overall. But I would say that the main instrument that we have put into place to enable that are the investment tax credits, where we're willing to pay up to 40% of the capital cost of these projects. The money we are announcing today is dedicated to a window that is a bilateral window between Canada and Germany for the purpose of exports, so it is separate from domestic utilization. But certainly as you build volume for export, you're also bringing down costs for hydrogen that can be used domestically, so they are related. Uh, I also want to add to that it's also part of the German philosophy. It's um, we are kickstarting a market here, which will then have effects uh, globally. Is also have effects here in Canada and and build value here in Canada. So it's not just the 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 bilateral window supports the export, but it supports a whole industry um, that is. Um, that is going to 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 gen be generated, and so our philosophy when we um, when we fund uh, this instrument uh, is in this bilateral window, but also globally, is that um, this will contribute to economic opportunities also in our partner countries. I'll take in the green first. Yes, Minister Wilkinson, Adam Cook, CBC News, Cape Breton. I uh, just wanted to pick 
up on the discussion from the previous question. Nova Scotia is trying to decarbonize itself in terms of its energy production, especially in terms of where coal is being produced here in the province. Is your department actively involved with the provincial government in terms of making sure that not only is the supply of green hydrogen available for international markets, but that it's going to help your own government's deadlines for getting provinces like Nova Scotia off coal and other fossil fuels? I'm just going to quickly repeat so that those online can hear. The question was following up on the last question. Um, this is primarily for hydrogen for international markets, but Nova Scotia needs to reduce its emissions, getting off coal. What is the uh, conversation and involvement of the federal government in that effort? Yeah, so I mean, you are referring in particular to the electricity grid, the need to phase out uh, coal and ultimately to get to a non-emitting grid. And, and the answer to are we collaborating with the province is yes. Um, I think Dave McGregor, who was at a meeting with me and Minister Rush yesterday <laughs> talking about these issues, would, would, uh, would validate that. Um, we, uh, we had an, a meeting a few months ago where Premier Houston came to Ottawa. Um, to actually discuss all of these issues. And we made a commitment and issued a statement at the end of that meeting that said that we would work in partnership. Uh, the federal government would support the efforts of the, the government of Nova Scotia to, uh, to move towards the non-emitting grid uh, that also would have abundant sources of power that allow you to attract new industry to the province. Um, and, and that we would do that in line with the kinds of timelines that exist under the clean electricity regulation, which is being developed at the federal level. We are actively engaged in conversations on the clean electricity regulation with the government of Nova Scotia, and we are working very hard to, uh, to ensure that we keep our commitment to support Nova Scotia in the work that's being done. Yesterday, I announced $200 million in federal funding for a number of wind projects and battery storage projects here in Nova Scotia, um, which was a big deal. Um, We have, uh, we have announced a number of projects prior to that, and I am quite confident that we will be announcing more. Um, but the partnership with the province on the, uh, on the electricity system has been a very strong one. Go ahead. So the question from the Halifax examiner, could you put a little bit of meat on the bones of how the um, auction process will help companies like Everwind and Bearhead advance their projects? So, and, and Marcus will correct me where I go wrong here. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's important to understand um, how uh, market, new markets open up and how technology evolution happens. And perhaps the best example of this is what happened with the development of wind power itself. Wind uh, right now is perhaps the most cost effective way to generate electricity. 30 years ago, it was much, much more expensive than alternatives. And the reason that we actually got to where we are today is largely because of the government of Germany, which actually put in place a tariff structure that was willing to pay more for the early part of the wind development, such that you could actually evolve the technology and cost reduce it, and you could actually get to larger manufacturing volumes of, uh, of wind turbines so that you actually brought the cost down. And as I say today, wind in Alberta is three cents a kilowatt hour when they actually go out to bid the most cost-effective way to generate electricity. Um, so this is essentially the same kind of thing, where we are looking to, in the early stage, create a market to allow for early uh, entry into the market for products that are probably a little bit more expensive than what the commercial, um, commercial system can bear at the present time allow for volume to be built, which will help to reduce costs, allow for further, uh, further cost reduction of the offshore wind platforms and the electrolysis systems to get to the point where wind, uh, onshore wind is today. And so the auctions essentially will be a bid into by uh, users, industrial users, of a price and a volume that they actually want to pay. Um, and, uh, and we will look then at what is the price that can be offered by producers including the, the folks that are with us today. Um, and we will use the $600 million to fill the gaps um, and, and to ensure that you can actually contract for, for, for the hydrogen. This is an early market development thing. Um, and Canada is the first country, as I understand it, that Germany has actually contracted with. We are going to be the first in the world to do this. 
by leading the market, you actually help to create the market and to actually be first to get down the cost curve, and that's exactly what this is intended to do. CBC asking how many Canadian companies will benefit from this? Well, I would say those that are that are leading at this point in terms of the development of their thoughts and processes, their environmental assessments and their engineering designs are probably going to be the ones that access this first. Um, the, the precise number of companies is impossible to say at this point because it depends a little bit on what the gap is and therefore what the volume um, you know, that this 600 million will actually attach to is. But certainly our hope is that it's, it's a number of companies that will be able to access this um, and we will see how it plays out through the competitive au auction process. Anyone that I've missed? Thanks very much, and that concludes the media availability today. Thank you.